Well, hello everyone, it's nice to be back. It really is nice to be back sitting in front of the camera recording another video about fountain pens. I'm sorry it's taken a while. I have had a little bit of a break, but unfortunately, you know, just university got a little bit busy this time around and I had to take a little bit of time off, but it's nice to be back. And that doesn't mean I haven't been doing stuff about you know, fountain pens in general. I bought a few fountain pens, I've been using fountain pens, and another thing that has caused me to stay away from the camera is, well, I've been making fountain pens again. Well, obviously I've been making fountain pens for a while. I first started making my fountain pens back when I was in high school. I've been using the university lathe when I've had some spare time. I've been 3D printing my pens, but recently I acquired my own um, lathe here at home that I can use whenever I want and I've been just cracking out pens. I've been spending a lot of time doing that because honestly I find it so much more fun and enjoyable to go ahead design my own pen, not use something that someone else has designed in hopes that I like it. The pens that I've been making I've been making from scratch and the pen that I'm showing you here tonight is the combination of, you know, weeks of me just standing at the, at the lathe and just making, you know, pen parts. And this is the pen that I've made. This pen here took about a day and a half to make and I just think it is a thing of beauty. This pen here is made from 100% ebonite. Everything is ebonite, it's all handmade and it was made in my workshop. Now there's not going to be too much footage of me making that. I'll probably condense that into its own video because there's just so much that goes into making these fountain pens. But I just want to make a video showing this fountain pen because I am absolutely chuffed at just the results that I've gotten. You know, just me standing there making cuts has produced this. Well, obviously I've airbrushed the uh, rest of the body, but I'm really, really happy. Because what I wanted to do was I wanted to make like a Japanese inspired design and there just wasn't really anything on the market that caught my fancy. So I went ahead, ordered some Ebonite from Japan because you know, that's pretty much where all the Ebonite comes from nowadays. And I just narrowed down my, narrowed down the, you know, results that I was getting until I got this. So let's take a quick look at this pen. I'm not sure what to call it, but this is probably the best pen I've ever made. So the first thing, obviously, it's a standard cigar shaped fountain pen. Obviously, you can see that. And I really like standard cigar shaped pens. I think there's something really nice. I'm not a person who is like an out and out minimalist. I I, you know, minimalism has its place. Minimalism can look nice, it can look ugly, and it can also be lazy. But I think there's something to, you know, Japanese and European cigar-shaped fountain pens that are just beautiful. Obviously, pure ebonite, though what I've gone ahead is I've gone and lacquered the pen and put some red um, acrylic paint on it, and then I've coated it with clear lacquer. So it is a pretty durable pen. And as you can see, right in the middle, or a little bit offset, is some black ebonite, which I think is nice. I'm not sure if I'll keep it in the future, but honestly, I love this pen. I really do. Take off the cap of the pen, cap comes off, and I've decided to leave the section of the pen blank, honestly, just because I thought it looked really nice like this. Honestly, the contrast between the red and the black, I think, is very, very nice. And if we look at the pen, yes, there is a bit of a step down, and yes, I am one to hate on step downs, but honestly, when step downs are implemented well enough, i.e. they're not that big of a step down, or they're positioned in such a way where it doesn't really bother you. I think step downs are okay. And on this pen, I've gone through about 10 sections to get the length just right, just comfortable, and it is so nice. The nib that I have in here is a Bok number six size nib. And the cool thing about Bok nibs is 
Um, there are websites on the internet where you can buy these Bok nibs and the taps that you use to make threads in the section and it's very easy and very nice user friendly if you know what you're doing and yeah it's just you know I think it is absolutely wonderful. Can you post this pen? Yes, of course you can. You have to push it on a little bit, but yes, of course you can post this pen. But honestly, you don't really need to post this pen because I think it's you know just long enough. I made this pen for me, it's just long enough. If you take a look at the back of the pen, um, I'm currently thinking about eye dropping this pen, so I didn't include a converter. Though if you want to, I have a converter here somewhere on the floor you can go ahead and chuck in your standard um i think this is a schmidt converter very easy to do and yes you can use a converter in this pen but i'm gonna eye drop this pen because you know why not and i gotta say everything about this pen is just you know i'm i'm biased here but i think this pen is just beautifully made. I really do love this pen. I'm going to take you through a writing sample in a minute because, um, you know, I've also gone ahead and shimmed the tines a little bit just to get it a little bit wetter, just to my liking. So this really is a proper handmade custom fountain pen. I know this hasn't been a proper review style video, but I just had to make a video about this pen because as you can see, I am so happy with the results. So let's get into a writing sample. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the writing sample for... I'm not actually sure what to call this pen. I'll just call it the JPL pen. JPL Ebonite pen. The ink that I'm using is just Waterman Purple. The nib that I have in this pen is just your average Bok medium. Bok number six medium nib. Let's get a quick writing sample. And as you can see from that, there was no issues with the writing at all. Though really that's just down to the nib that I've nib unit that I've used. But as I said, I did shim this a little bit just to get a bit more ink. And as you can see, there's a nice amount of ink. But we're not really here for the nib, we're just really here for the pen. And I gotta say the pen is just wonderful. It's just lovely, comfortable to use. I really do enjoy using this pen. It is really nice. And these Bok nibs, I know there is always going to be a, you know, Bok versus Yovo. Honestly, I think it honestly doesn't matter. As long as the nib writes beautifully and it's tuned well enough, you're going to have a lot of fun whether it is Bok or not or Yovo. And there you have it, a writing sample and review kind of of my fountain pen. And I'm sorry if this hasn't been a more traditional style review with all the specs and in-depth analysis of the pen, but I just wanted to get a video out about my fountain pen. I am seriously happy with the results that I've gotten here because I've made quite a few fountain pens in the past, whether it be on the 3D printer, and yes, I will finish that series soon, but whether it's been on the 3D printer, my old metal lathe at school, my metal lathe at uni or wood lathe, whatever it is, this is the best fountain pen I have made. Easily the best. I am just so happy. Whether it's the results with, you know, airbrushing the, the pen or whatever the form, I'm just happy that I made this pen and I'm going to be making a lot more in the future. Is it perfect? Well, no. One thing that I that I would like to improve in the future, obviously, is making it cap better or post better. Another thing I'd like to do is maybe change how I make the section, maybe have like a brass insert or something, but those things are just nitpicking because honestly, I've used this pen for the past you know few days and I am just loving every single second of it. I've really fallen in love with the pen, with this pen more so than any other pen I've done before because 
there's just something so satisfying about making your own pen. And that's where I want to bring the video because, um, you know, I have a lathe, I have a fair amount of leftover ebonite. If anyone is, you know, interested in, you know, getting one of these pens, you know, you know, let me know in the comments because I might whip up a few more pens, shove them on, I think it's Etsy is the place where everyone puts their handmade stuff. And if a few people want, you know, some of their pens, I might make up a few and, um, you know, either sell them or give them away on this channel. Be sure to let me know, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go back and use this pen, redesign it, because honestly, making your own pens, there's just something so satisfying. It's a real joy. And with that, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy it. And hopefully there'll be more of this in the future. Thank you very much for watching.